Hi everyone, welcome to part five of us working through the Ascension machine on Hack Smarter. If this is the first video you're watching, I do recommend you start from the beginning because this has been a series of videos as we work our way through this Linux challenge lab. In this video, we are gonna focus on privilege escalation and hopefully we can fully compromise this machine and become the root user. Now, if you don't have a subscription to Hack Smarter Labs, you should go ahead and get one. It's incredibly affordable and you learn a lot by watching me. You learn even more by having hands on keyboard. You might also notice there's some live chat. If they talk over here, we have quite a few people joining for the live stream, but I make all of these videos while I am live because I think this content should be as accessible and as affordable for as many people as possible. But if you're doing the hack with me afterwards, you get significantly more content, one-on-one -on -one support, uh, custom notes for each module, my personal notes, interactive quizzes, one-on-one, -on -one, I already said one-on-one -on -one support, you know the deal. But let's go ahead and dive right in from where we left off in the previous video. So in the previous video, we were able to compromise user three and we got the user three flag. And now what we wanna work on, whoops, is privilege escalation to see if we can become the root user. There's a few different things that we can try out. We could try some automated tools such as LinPs. LinPs will automate a lot of the checks for privilege escalation, but I like to do it manually first for a few reasons. Number one, if you're on a pen test engagement, let's say you're on an internal engagement, you have initial foothold on a Linux machine, you probably don't wanna fire off LinPs because it's gonna quickly, quickly get detected or not be able to run. So if you know how to do some basic manual enumeration, that is gonna serve you well. Now we've already done a lot of enumeration on this machine hunting through var, www, looking at other files on the system, but let's pick up where we left off there, focusing specifically on maybe there's some things that user three can do that our other users could not do. One thing to do is sudo dash L, and we have his password, I think. I think it's like user three password. So we cannot run sudo. And actually let's start a new thing in our notes as well. We will say, becoming root and I'm just going to drop notes of each thing that we check. So we cannot run anything with sudo. I'll do like checking sudo. We have nothing there. We can also check our groups to see if our users in any interesting groups with ID and he is not in the interesting groups with ID, but we'll add that to our notes as well. Oh, I switched out to my host machine. There we go. And it's actually important when you're doing a real engagement to document the things you do even when they do not work for a few reasons. A big purpose of a pen test report isn't only to show like, hey, here are the vulnerabilities you need to fix, but also here are the strengths. Here are things that you're doing well. So if you document the things you try that did not succeed, it'll make it easier for you to create a list of strengths for the client on the final report. Additionally, the client may ask you like, what was your methodology or what things did you check? Well, if you took detailed notes of the things you checked, it's really easy to answer that question. And it shows the client that you really are doing your due diligence in their environment. So when I'm doing a real pen test, I do try to take pretty detailed notes on each thing I try, even if it fails in the process. All right, since we cannot, we don't have any pseudo privileges. We don't have any interesting groups. We already ran process spy, I think is user one, and we didn't see any interesting processes there. There's a few other things to check, but to be honest, I always forget the syntax, but one thing to check is what's called capabilities. And let me show this to you. If we go over to this tab, we're going to go to DuckDuckGo because I noticed hack tricks doesn't seem to be indexed well by Google anymore. But if we do hack tricks and we do Linux pri privilege escalation, there's a really good checklist of things to go through for manual privilege escalation with Linux. Jeez. It does not contain harmful stuff. You shut your mouth. All right, Linux privilege escalation. Now we could do OS info. That would be if we're going to drop like a kernel exploit. I doubt that's going to be the path forward. We can see if we can do some path hijacking. Just anything out of the ordinary in our path. And this may not mean much to you, but if you use Linux regularly, you can tell that all of these are standard paths. We likely can't write to anything in our path. We can check environment information, which is helpful as well. Sometimes, especially if you're on a Docker container, you can see passwords being stored in the environment. Oh, hey, Nick, we're doing the Ascension machine on Hacksmarter. 
They can see passwords being stored in the environment. I notice that most often on Docker environments, we are not in Docker and I'm not seeing anything there. We could search for kernel exploits. I don't see kernel exploits very often, both in the real world. One is in the real world, generally do a kernel exploit. You have a good chance of crashing the entire server. So not something you want to try, but kernel exploits are something I notice on like older hack the box and try hack me machines, not most modern uh, CTF machines because you don't see them in most modern real world things. We could look into dirty cow. We could see if that is a vulnerable. But Linpeas is also a good check. We could check sudo as well. One point nine point fifteen. I don't believe that is a vulnerable version of sudo. Yeah, you can see your sudo has to be less than one point eight point two eight, and we have one point nine fifteen, so it's not going to be vulnerable to that. Oh, there's, a, there's better things than all of this. I mean, you can go through all of this, but there's some basic things such as checking for capabilities. Now here's process spy, looking at processes. We've already done a little bit of that earlier in the machine. Cron tab. We've already looked at that a little bit as well. Okay, I'm gonna control F. Oh, Linux capabilities, that's what I'm looking for. That's one thing I always check, especially on a CTF machine. But Linux capabilities divide root privs into smaller distinct units, allowing processes to have a subset of privs. This minimizes the risk by not granting full root privileges unnecessarily. But if you have capabilities over certain binaries, you can go over to GTFO bins and then become the root user. Is the lab paid? The lab is paid, but during the live stream, it is free. Go to hacksmarter.org and click Hacksmarter Live at the top. Otherwise, you can get a... You can get a sub to all these labs for like six dollars a month if you do an annual plan. Anyways, there is a Linux command to check for processes or capabilities, rather. All right, to say the capabilities for particular process, use blah blah. blah. Okay, there's a way just to print all capabilities. Is it git cap? I don't think so. That's on a specific file, user capabilities. Okay, there's like a one liner that allows you to easily identify what capabilities you have and I'm not seeing it on this, but I may have just missed it. If those, those of you in chat, if you know the one liner, drop it, see if you know it. Oh, hold up. What is this? Oh, that's the capsis module. <laughs> a big part of ethical hacking is just Googling around. Like I'm terrible at remembering command syntax. I always know like there's a way I can do this. Oh, here, here's what I want to do. I think I just forget the syntax. Okay. Yep. This is what I was trying to do. So it's this one liner right here that will tell you what capabilities you have on processes and systems. A lot of these are standard stuff that you can't really exploit, but if you've done enough CTFs, you'll know that this right here stands out to you specifically if we have the cap set UID on the Python three binary, we might be able to abuse that to become the root user. Let's go ahead and add that information to our notes. And I'll add a note that having this permission over Python three may allow us to escape and become the root user. And one, oh, there we go. Axarin, you are correct. That is the right one. One great website for this, if you've never heard of it, is GTFO bins. On here, you can search for capabilities. And then we can say, hey, what if we have capabilities for Python? Well, maybe. Yeah, there we go, capabilities. So I'm gonna click into Python. And if we scroll down to the capabilities section, zoom in so you guys can see it. It says, if the binary has the Linux cap set UID capability set, 
or it is executed by another binary with the capability set. It can be used as a backdoor to maintain privilege access by manipulating this own process UID. Let's add that to our notes. Copy this right here. Control C. Paste it in. And I'm going to make it much smaller. Like so. Whoa, 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 no, no, don't do that. I'm just trying to align it to the left. And let's grab a code block here. Now we'll say, we'll, we'll give a source as well. So we know where we're getting our information from. Okay, no, that looks bad. We just want the link. Now let's grab this code block right here of what it tells us what we can try to do. Okay, so we have the CP, which Python, which we can see that here. It's it's in the home, it's in our, our home folder. That's odd. Not normally a place you'd see something like that. But there we have Python 3. And we can try this. Home user three, Python three. And we are now the root user, ladies and gentlemen, by abusing that Python capability. We will drop it in right there. And then from there, we can go ahead and get the final flag. Oh, I think it's actually an opt possibly. And there is the final flag. But here's the thing, guys. I have showed you how to get all the other five flags. And I've showed you what you can do to get to flag number six. But I'm not going to show you flag number six. You don't need to snipe flags from my stream or from this video. I want you to do it on your own. So I've showed you everything you need to do. But even just having hands on keyboard and following along with me, you learn so much by forcing yourself to also go through the work. So I've showed you how to get the final flag. I showed you how you can solve this machine, how you can get the certificate of completion. I can tell everybody, look, I ascended, I ascended. I am the Linux root user, but I want you to do it on your own. So, hey, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully you enjoyed this series of us going and learning some Linux hacking together. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.